Dr. Adam Davis here again from South Georgia Spine and Joint Center, and we're at our state-of-the-art facility here in Thomasville, Georgia. And today we wanna to talk about degenerative discs. Okay, so you've probably heard the term degenerative disc disease or DDD, those type things. Uh, you probably know someone that has degenerative discs, and these things happen over time. So that's the one thing about degeneration is it takes time for these things to develop. Once they are developed, there's a whole slew of problems that can happen that take, you know, a medical integration approach to sometimes solve those dysfunctions, okay? So today we're gonna dive in to, you know, what is a degenerative disc? How do you get it? What can you do to treat it? And some of the outcomes that can come from it. So when we look at degenerative discs or just discs in general, Everyone's kind of seen a model of the spine before, and this is kind of how it presents here. So you can see all these little uh, disc, little gelatin uh, type materials that kind of cushion the spine. They have attachments to them. They have a very limited blood supply, kind of on the outside a little bit. Uh, they definitely cushion the spine. So they're designed kind of like a jelly donut to like when we move certain ways, if we're flexing and extending, and then we laterally flex to different sides and even rotation, these little discs kind of guide those forces for our, our joints and our bones and things to move. And there's, you know, muscle attachments into the bones, but like with the discs, they're kind of cushioning that motion on either side. So it's like a jelly donut's kind of pushing out one way and then it comes back to its original state, pushes out the other way, comes back to the original state. When you get degenerative disc disease, you're not gonna be able to push it out and come back to its original state because degeneration over time of the discs sort of dehydrates the disc. So let me show you a model that can give you a much better idea of kind of what I'm talking about. So when you look at degenerative discs, okay, this is what a healthy disc technically looks like, okay? So you got nice round material, you know, it cushions pretty even on both sides of the vertebrae, and you can kind of see this up front. All the nerves coming out, everything kind of cushions well. That's how you want it to be designed, okay? And you want it to stay like that your whole, whole life if possible. So when we move, this is how these discs get their nutrition and get their lubrication, so to speak. That's why movement is critical. So how do you get degenerative disc disease? It's not just, oh, I'm getting old. What it really is, is the things we've done for years and decades, repetitive motions, lifting wrong in the weight room, sitting too much in these sustained postures, not moving this disc, in the different planes and the different areas that our body needs starts that degenerative process okay so when you have a dysfunction at the joint and you're not moving well at that joint specifically and you've never done anything about it before now all of a sudden that starts the process of inflammation and degeneration and that's kind of how it starts looking here what happens is the disc gets a little bit more compressed now, in a little bit, I'll show you an x-ray of kind of what discs look like, degenerative discs look like on an x-ray. But what starts off is here on these, the, the ends of these little vertebrae are what's called end plates, okay? That's actually part of the disc. So you have a whole complex called the disc, two parts of the disc uh, called the nucleus propulsus and, and, and annulus. But basically, those little end plates that are on the very top and bottoms of these vertebrae, they become part of that complex. That's what starts to de degenerate a lot of times first, is that end plate starts to take a hit. And that starts the process of that disc being able to shrink a little bit. So now, if that disc is less hydrated and you're not moving very well at that disc and that joint, you're gonna start that degenerative process. And there's a lot of reasons why we get it. But the key is, is exercising, doing chiropractic, keeping that disc mobile, keeping it moving. Every time we move and we flex and move and do things, that's constantly squishing the disc, so to speak. They call it imbibition. And what it means is you're constantly getting 
things, hydration into that disc, nutrition in that disc. And that usually only happens when you move and when you move right. That's the difference. It's not just moving, it's moving right. So it's critical to get these joints moving at every level, you know, but we're just, you know, kings as human beings, we're kings at not taking care of our spines, but we try to do everything else. The spine's the most important part, all right? So when you're starting this process and you're starting to get compressed a little, it could take years, but you'll slowly get to this presentation and maybe even this presentation. So now you can clearly see those end plates are very jagged now. You see, they're not nice and smooth like they were, all right? So they're very jagged. And these little end plate jagged parts are what we call spurs. And you can see them on x-rays really well. But when you have a spur, this is a classic presentation of, I move one way and I might feel good. I move another way and I take a hit that sometimes wants to knock me on the ground. You probably know people like that. Maybe it's your parents, maybe it's yourself. Maybe it's someone that had an old injury, uh, grandparents, those type things. These are the types of presentations that keeps people from doing the things they wanna do. You know, there's a guy that I'm treating currently that wants to play golf again, but he's in too much pain. He's got so much degeneration that he, it's tough for him to get to, to be able to play golf and do the things he wants to do. And everybody knows that story. I can't pick up my grandkids, okay? I can't play basketball with my kids. I can't even work on my house, and I love to do yard work or different things. These are the presentations that limit that. Problem is, when you get to this point, your disc is pretty much gone. You get bone on bone at times, and you get these major spurs. Now, a lot of people would say, okay, now I'm so degenerative that I need surgery, and that is not always the case. Okay, so our goal here at South Georgia Spine and Joint is to use a medically integrated approach to solve the dysfunction. So we're not trying to solve and change what that disc looks like because we can't do that. But if you can solve the dysfunction to get the joints moving right, get a little more hydration in that disc, stabilize the pelvis, reduce the inflammation, and strengthen the muscles in a very progressive way to get that complex of the low back to function better, we see it every single day, even with degenerative discs. You can get pain-free in certain instances or drastically reduce that, that pain and keep you out of the operating room. So it's not always a surgical problem. It's just coming up with the right, you know, progression and treatment plan that's gonna get you going in the right direction. So let's take a look at an x-ray and kind of see on an x-ray what does degenerative disc look like. So when we look at a degenerative disc on an x-ray, this is a pretty classic presentation of what a disc might look like with degenerative disc disease. You can clearly see here the disc space being lost and you can see white that kind of goes above and below the disc. That whiteness is what they call ebernation, and it's called, it's a very specific process to degeneration and becomes very white, so that's easy to see when you see the arthritic changes. You can see that end plate spurring out a little bit. So now what's gonna happen here, these two guys might actually conjoin together and kind of calcify together. When that happens, you'll lose motion in that disc and that joint pretty much forever if you calcify that area, okay? So not only are you taking a hit, but you might lose that motion. And you can clearly see down here that disc space being lost as well. You're getting a little problem back in here with that little spurring and then down in here. So this is a classic case of degenerative disc disease. Now, the problem with this, you say, well, what else does that cause? Well, we've went over a lot of slew of problems from herniated discs to different things we talked about, mechanical low back pain. Uh, but this can cause every type of pain. So because of the integrity that the that is lost between this disc space, now back here where these nerves come out, you're constantly encroaching on the nerves as well. So a lot of times patients that come in with this type of presentation and degenerative disc disease, 
they'll have herniated discs or they'll have compression and encroachment on the nerve and radiating pain down the legs and things like that, sciatic pain. And those all go with, maybe it's just stiffness. You'll get a lot of stiffness with that. But those injuries and presentations go with disc disease. So disc disease itself is a condition, but it can cause multiple other conditions if the problem and dysfunction isn't being worked on or trying to be solved. That's the biggest thing. When I see this, I see nothing but inflammatory process, okay? So when you're getting these positions here, there's constant inflammation and re-aggravation of of these discs and of this mechanical integrity, uh, the nerves, the rotation of of the joints when you're moving, you're constantly taking a hit every time you're doing everything and it's debilitating. People can't move. They can't live the life that they want. And it's this presentation that's causing that. So the first step in trying to solve the the dysfunction of degenerative discs, and like I said, not solve the degenerative disc, but solve the dysfunction of its movement and biomechanics is using a, a, a medically integrated approach. So the first step obviously is chiropractic. Now, With chiropractic, what you do with with a lot of degenerative discs, everyone thinks adjustments are the same thing for everyone. So we're gonna turn you on your side and crack and do this and that and that, and that is not how it works, okay? One of the most powerful techniques, you know, chiropractic-wise for degenerative discs is decompression. In an uh, earlier video of herniated discs, I've explained how the table kind of drops and gives you that opening of those disc spaces, well, it's the same here. When you're getting compressed discs, you need to open that space up. So the biggest and and most effective thing you can do is get that pelvis to drop a little bit and then put the hand up on the mid back and get those disc spaces to kind of open up. If you do that enough, yeah, you'll stretch out the ligaments, the tendons, the muscles that are tight and getting stiff from the degenerative disc disease. But what will really happen is you're taking pressure off those nerves that are getting compressed. You're taking pressure off that sort of bone on bone presentation. You're taking pressure off those spurs that are sticking out and clipping you as you move and do things. So that's the key is that decompression, okay? The second thing is lining that pelvis up. That never changes for almost any condition. If your pelvis is off and you have degenerative disc disease, it's the it's a it's a perfect storm of pain because your pelvis is off which is giving you tissue stress and inflammation where it shouldn't be anyway and then the discs aren't lining up right and the the vertebrae is not lining up right so now you're taking a hit with that as well so lining up that pelvis and decompressing the spine using chiropractic is some of the most effective techniques you can do to to help decrease that inflammation and not re-inflame yourself getting more motion in there. Because if you don't have motion, what do you have? You have commotion, and that's the key, okay? So don't think just going to the chiropractor, we're gonna put everyone on their side and crack and do things and, and cavitate and do those types of things. It's a very specific technique for these specific conditions, and it can be very effective, and we've seen it work for thousands of patients. So the next stage, and trying to solve the dysfunction of de- degenerative disc disease is physical therapy. And as you can see here in Thomasville, we have a, a nice uh, physical therapy department, uh, very spacious. We have all the equipment and all the stuff you need to get better with any condition, really. But for degenerative discs, kind of like some of the other conditions, we need to stabilize those muscles. So like I've said in other videos, there's muscles that go up the back, okay? Multifidus muscles, erector spinae, uh, longissimus, different things. Uh, and what happens is anytime there's back pain or a condition of the back, okay? Typically those muscles become extremely weak. So the problem with that is, yeah, using chiropractic's great because like I said, we're stabilizing the joints, opening things up but you're not functionally resilient in your life, okay? So that's where physical therapy comes in, all right? 
They assess you, they get an idea of what's on the x-rays, and here at South Georgia Spine and Joint, we always do an integrated approach with everyone's condition. So we'll sit around on a round table with our medical team, physical therapist team, and chiropractic, and we'll all come up with what's the best way to help someone with these degenerative discs, and practically any condition, really. So everyone's on the same page, and that's what physical therapy does. Once they know what the actual condition is and what the problem is, they'll assess you separately. Find out your ranges of motion, what the pain is, all that, and they'll come up with a very progressive program to do just that, make you functionally resilient in your life. So now when you go pick up your grandkids and you sit at a desk or you're on your lawnmower getting pelted around uh, or you want to play basketball with your son or do the things you always want to do, play golf, things you couldn't do, having those muscles fire up at the right time and protect that back and protect, protect the degeneration that's been going on, that is the key to long-term success. And physical therapy is excellent and actually demanded in this case when you have degenerative disc disease. So medical integration also includes medical team, obviously. And we have the greatest medical team probably on the face of the planet, okay? So what they can do, there's literally like 10 to 15 different options of treatments that are on non-invasive, non-surgical. So our number one goal here at South Georgia Spine and Joint is to try to prevent any type of surgery whatsoever. That is the number one thing, okay? And people have been told, specifically with degenerative discs, I need surgery. There's nothing else we can do for you. And that is definitely not the case, okay? There's a million things you can try, and our medical team is excellent at doing their own evaluation seeing what you've done in the past, getting an idea of your presentation, and clinically coming up with the right progression for you, okay? So with degenerative discs, it gets a little tricky because as we said, it's not just one condition, okay? Degenerative disc causes herniated disc, causes uh, spurring problems, causes sciatic pain, causes mechanical low pad pain. It's a little bit of everything. Spasms, that's a common one, okay? so. With the medical team, they can do a lot of regenerative medicine, okay? Things that can help the disc, things to decrease inflammation. So one of the biggest things you see with herniations, sometimes that come from degenerative discs, is inflammatory proteins that stay in the disc, okay? So I've seen it time and time again. When we're trying to do chiropractic and physical therapy, but someone staying, oh, I'm an eight out of 10 and I'm constantly there. That's instant feedback that they need medical integration because they're constantly being re-inflamed at home or at work, whatever they're doing. So the key is using our medical team to decrease that inflammation, all right? We can take people who are eight out of 10 and get them to a four within a day or two because you're reducing those inflammatory proteins. When you have degenerative discs, that's a very common thing you see. Constant reinflammation over and over and over again. And you feel like you're not getting anywhere. And the problem is you need chiropractic, you need physical therapy, might even need massage, but you definitely need to get that inflammation down. And there's many techniques and many different ways that our medical team can do those things, as well as regenerative medicine. Okay, so coming to South Georgia Spine and Joint, we want to put that whole approach together so we can solve the dysfunction of the joint, get more space in that joint, take pressure off the nerve, get those muscles with physical therapy to fire up and not only fire up, but to do so outside of here when you're doing the things you want to do in life. Okay, the medical team takes care of you by decreasing the inflammation and regenerating uh, uh, maybe the disc maybe some of the dysfunction that's in there because that's what we do is regenerate. We do regenerative medicine, okay? The number one thing that I've seen people do is they constantly stay on that hamster wheel of medicine, okay? And you've seen it before. People go to pain medicine, pain management, and they're given drug after drug after drug after drug, and they're constantly on this hamster wheel. 
and they don't know what to do next, okay? And the problem is we're not getting those people off that hamster wheel. You're constantly doing that for the rest of your life, all right? So try it just one time. If you're struggling with pain and you have degenerative disc disease, try a medically integrated approach. Get you off that hamstring wheel, all right? Get this dysfunction addressed, all right? Try to solve that dysfunction. Use regenerative medicine. Decrease the inflammation. Strengthen the muscles and stabilize those joints because frankly, that's the only way to solve this degenerative process. We gotta stabilize the joints. We gotta get you strong. We gotta get the inflammation down. You do that. And there's no question, you can either get back down to no pain, which I've seen many times, or at least get you comfortable to a level where you're not in the operating room and you can get back to doing what you always wanted to do. And that's play with your grandkids, work, play, do the things you wanna do with your kids, work in the yard, play golf. Those are the things in life that make people happy. And when you can't do those things, that puts you in another whole state of health, all right? So at South Georgia Spine and Joint, give us an opportunity to address all three areas. Get on a care plan, get on a specific plan where you're, where you're doing these things multiple times a week for a couple months to give us an opportunity to solve that dysfunction. If you can do that, then you can get your life back. So just remember, don't just manipulate, integrate. For South Georgia Spine and Joint Center, this is Dr. Davis wishing you good health.